Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. This is the March Snacku, uh, which by the way, I have to apologize to the Snacku folks, especially Shigeki who runs this thing. Uh, I've had this for about a week now. Actually, I think it's a week and a few days. Um, I just haven't gotten to it. I've just been legitimately busy. The other thing is with these videos, I need to actually be hungry, at least a little bit hungry when I do them. So um, that's another factor. But right now, as you can tell, like, sorry, I'm a little bit sweaty. I may be glowing more because I was sweating. Uh, I have workout clothes on. I just got done at the gym. My wife and I did. So I figure I'm hungry right now. I'm legitimately hungry. So this is a perfect time to do this. I have the time. So I'm going to do this and throw this up. Um, not same day I do it, but the next day. Um, just a note, if you end up hearing noises coming from above, it's because my wife's probably walking around, like, getting things done around the house. So I apologize for that if it comes through on the microphone. Hopefully it doesn't, though. We'll find out. Um, yeah, so this is the March one. Uh, I, I like to look ahead just to kind of know what I'm getting into, but um, not, like, any of the flavor text on it. So I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. I just know, like, what the items are. And this one seems pretty interesting. There's one item in particular in here that I'm very interested to get into because... It sounds like it could go great or terrible, pretty much. So, we'll see. But, um, yeah, real quick, please subscribe if you like these videos. I also do, I know this is kind of, like, out of character for the other stuff I put on my on this channel. I'm mainly doing, like, horror-related stuff. But I'm really big into, like, Japanese culture and, and just, like, f trying different foods in general. So, you know, this is my thing. I'll keep doing these, and then I have horror videos. So, if you're into that stuff... Hit the subscribe, please. Literally takes you like a second. Even if you're not into it, if you could just help me out, hit the subscribe. Also, thumbs up are cool and comments always welcome. All right, so I'm going to pull it out. And this one is, what is the theme of this one? Totori. Okay, the, the region of Totori. So, sorry, my essential tremors are a little bad right now because I am hungry. Uh, let me read this. Totori is located along the coast in central Japan and is the country's least populated prefecture. However, it has a lot of history and is considered to be where the earliest settlers and the Shinto religion originated. Interesting. As evidenced by remains from as far back as 14,000 BC, the word Totori in Japanese is formed from two kanji characters. The first, it's a picture, means bird and the second means to get. Early inhabitants in the area make their living catching the region's plentiful waterfowl. Okay, that's interesting. So I will remove the top tissue paper, give you just a little peek into what we're getting into. Hopefully you see some interesting stuff. There aren't any like super large packages this time. Like usually there's like one item that's relatively big. So I'm just going to kind of go at this however. Okay. So this, actually, let's see if I can, I'm going to assume I got two of these. So, okay, here we go. I found, because the one I, first one I grabbed of these is like all broken. I don't want to do that. I want to do the one that's whole so I can show it to you. So this is actually the one that I was saying could be really good or could be really bad or actually somewhere in between. So this one is baked crab senbai. Baked crab senbai. So to me, that sounds like. I'm probably going to like it. I'm from Maryland. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not originally, but I've lived most of my life in Maryland, and that's where I live right now. And we're all about crab. You know, people love crab. We have the best crab cakes. That's legit. So, oh, and by the way, if people out there are listening do really like crab cakes, there's a crab cake place that I really, really like in Maryland called Box Hill Pizzeria. It doesn't sound like a really good crab place, but they make very amazing crab cakes, and you can order online. Uh, a little bit pricey, but it's really good to just do that here and there. So you you can check them out online, Box Hill Pizzeria. Get it shipped to your house. They're amazing. I'm telling you. Okay, so let's get into this baked crab senbai. People have been watching me do enough of these know I'm all about the senbai. So look at that. That's interesting. Ooh, it's kind of sticky. Yeah, it's got like this kind of, I don't know if you can see it. There's like a bit of a sheen. It's like a little, you can't see it that well on there. It's like a little bit um, shimmery. It smells sweet, actually. I don't smell any sort of fishiness. It smells actually more kind of like a cookie. 
in my opinion. Oh, what does it say about it? A popular cracker and satori made by baking puffed rice with crushed dried crab and shrimp. Okay, so there's shrimp as well. It's, okay. There's a little bit of a fishiness that comes in. Yeah, I can, actually I can identify that as crab. I get a little bit of the shrimp flavor first and then I get the crab flavor on the end. But up front, it's like this kind of sweet, buttery um, cracker. It's, and it's like, as you can tell from the color, like it's pretty well baked. So it's nicely crunchy, but it's also got a little bit of like a almost burnt note to it. Like not quite burnt, but pretty well um, toasted. And I really like that flavor on it. Um, there's a little bit of a heat at the end coming in too. Hmm. It's very interesting. I mean, the fact that that sweetness is in there is just kind of confusing with the crab and the shrimp, but I like how it goes. It's um, it's good. I have a feeling my wife's not gonna like that. She's not big on the um, on the seafoody stuff, so I'll probably end up being able to eat all of that. That's good. I like that. What do you got? Cleanse that palate. All right. Oh man, they gave me three of them. Nice. I'm excited about that. Okay, next thing. What is this one? Mm, I think I'm going to have to open it to find out. Is this one of the... Okay, this might be Kaike Onsen Senbai. So it says Senbai on it there. There's nothing on the back, but... I'm going to have to open it up first, and then I'll let you know if that's what it is. I think that's what it is. It's a little bit soft to touch. Yes, that is exactly what it is. Okay, so it's kind of like, it looks kind of like two little pancakes put together. Let's see, what is that on there? Looks like, like sesame pieces. Yeah, little sesame seeds. Yeah, and that's, all right, let's read about this. Uh, Kaike Onsen Senbai, a regionally exclusive snack made with local seaweed salt infused red bean paste. Interesting. Sandwiched by two crispy rice wafer crackers. The snack is made by a small shop in the Kaike Onsen Hot Spring in North Tatori. Yeah, so I watch videos on YouTube of people who like live in Japan who are English speaking, and um, a lot of them from like Canada and the U.S. And one of the things they've covered is onsen, which is like natural spring water baths, and there are like places you can go for it. So that's really interesting. So just letting you know, something I actually recognize. So it smells sweet. I can smell the red bean paste. I never had red bean paste until I started doing this box, and now I legitimately can tell you like when I do taste and when I do smell red bean paste. So thank you, Snacku. Yeah, it smells like red bean paste and sweet. Mm -hmm. There's that specific red bean paste flavor, the specific red bean paste texture which is a little kind of potato-y, you know, like grainy potato-y. Or, you know, if you've ever had like kidney beans, black beans, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it tastes very much like a lot of the other stuff we've gotten in Snacku that is, um, that has red bean paste and is like, has like a cake on, on the outside of it. It tastes very similar to that. I feel like this is maybe a little bit sweeter than those, and I kind of like that about it. It almost comes off as having like a little bit of a maple touch to it. You know, it's good. The outside pieces um, that are sandwiching the red bean paste are kind of like a little bit chewy, but mainly soft. I dig it. My wife's not going to like that either. She doesn't like red bean paste. I'm the I'm the main snacku guy in this household. Although every now and then there are certain items where she's like, "Oh, that's awesome. That's really good." So, they do a good job. Okay. Let's go with Totori Sand. Um so this is Totori Sandwich. That's how it's said apparently, Sandwich. But from one of my YouTube videos. 
that I've watched. That's how I know. No, nothing on there. Okay, so this is... Satori is home to the largest seaside desert in Japan. The desert runs for 16 kilometers along the coast to the Sea of Japan. You can take a camel ride along the sand dunes, interesting, which can reach over 50 meters tall. These crispy regional snacks are made with salted caramel whipped cinnamon chocolate. Okay, that is a string of words that sounds amazing together. And if I would read that to my wife, she would be like, yeah, let me try that. So I have a feeling if it tastes like what it's supposed to, it's going to be a home run for her. That little piece of it broke off, but okay. Oh my God. As soon as I took it out, like it smells like salted caramel. Oh my gosh. So I love like salted caramel ice cream and stuff like that. Sorry, cat's yelling in the background. You're going to hear my cat getting loud because she's just eaten and now she wants attention and she's not getting it. But oh my God, it smells so strongly of salted caramel and it's like, it smells buttery. It looks like it's buttery. Like, look at that. Look at those, um, cookies on the outside man mm. stuck oh man there's like there's like what is in on the inside there's something that's a little bit crunchy in the cream filling what is that i don't know so the cinnamon's in there but the cinnamon's very light it's mainly like caramel with a little bit of salt to it and it's got like a really nice sweetness from the cookie on the outside it's like kind of buttery um that cream is really decadent the flavor on this is really good this oh, mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. if you like salted caramel things this is a home run home run now like whatever it is it's almost like like little, I don't even know if you'd be able to see it, like little um, rice, like puffed rice pieces in there for texture to make it like a slight bit crunchy. My wife's going to love it. That is. And that little touch of cinnamon does so much in that. When I was first reading, I was just like, oh, I don't really know what the cinnamon's going to add to the party, if it'll be all that complimentary, because cinnamon sometimes like really competes with the flavors that it's in something with. But that, it's the right amount that it's just like this nice little accent in there. That is killer. That may, I'm going to be honest, that may be like the tastiest thing I've ever gotten from a snack -oo. That thing is so awesome. I want desserts like that like all the time. That'd be great. Okay, so next, something that kind of looks like, a, like Raisinets or Goobers. And this is... Mugiko, sweet organic milk glazed brown sugar crackers from Hokkaido. So this is one of the, you know, side items. A little bear face. Sorry. Sorry about the glare. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. So if you want to get a look real quick, actually, these items right here, as I scroll up, you can, you know, stop on them. Those are the, like, additional items and the items over here. Do, do, do are the themed items okay so let's get into this Mugiko. i'll show you they look like raisinets or goobers see yeah it smells like milk chocolate basically oh my cat's coming oh no that water's not for you buddy excuse me thank you mm. okay so it kind of tastes like the inside is like a rice crispy, like a few rice krispies put together, but they're kind of soggy because there's not much of like any crunch to them with milk chocolate. Yeah, I mean they almost have a little bit of a of a corn note to them as well. You know they're good, but I just. But I like the chocolate. I like the flavor of those little, like, Rice crispy things. It's just that... No, it tastes more like Pops. Is it, if anyone's eaten that cereal Pops, it's got that kind of flavor to it. I, the only thing I don't really like about this is the texture. Like, I wish that it was kind of, like, crunchy on the inside. 
But other than that, I mean, it tastes good. So, yeah, that's decent. I mean, I'll eat it for sure. I think I only got one of those. So, okay. And I think I have two of these. I gotta figure out which one's not totally screwed up. If any. That one. They both sound screwed up. Maybe this one less than the other one. Okay, so here we go. Pear Gaufret, I guess. Satori is famous for producing some of the best pears in Japan. Interesting. These snacks are made by sandwiching thin wafer cookies with locally made pear cream. Can't say I've ever had pear cream. Very interesting. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I mean, obviously, look, it's pears. Although, that actually looks like it. There's nothing here. Looks like it could be like Red Delicious Apples in the United States. All right, let's get this sucker open. So we've had, uh, we, I, have had snacks like this out of, out of Snacku on here before, like kind of shaped like this. Um, but, sorry, it's like broken. Ugh. So I'm just going to have to show you the largest portion of it. But I will tell you this, as soon as I open the package, like it wafts of, of pear hit my nose. See? And that's like kind of a little bit green. Yeah, it's a little green there. Let me get. It just smells strongly of pear. So the pear flavor is actually pretty light. Hmm. It's got a great texture, crunchy but light at the same time. It's like a really nice wafer if you've ever had like just a really nice light wafer. And that cream is really, like, soft and silky. That cream is really good. And it's got the pear, but it's not, like, super strong. So, like, honestly, if someone was, if you gave it to someone and didn't tell them what it was and they were trying it, they'd probably be like, I get a fruit, but I don't particularly know what it is. So, but that's good. I like that. I like, I like that creaminess. I like the nice crunch. It's very light. That's like a nice, kind of like something that, that people would have with like tea. I like that. That one's really good. Happy to have it. Okay, next. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave this one for last, I think. Because that could go, that's strong. Or maybe not last, but like close to last there's a particular type of thing I like to make go last. Okay, so this next thing is Dyson Milk Manju. All right, so I got pieces up. This is a cute little package. Back doesn't have anything. So Dyson Milk Manju, a snack made at the base of Mount Dyson, one of Japan's ancient dormant volcanoes and the birthplace of Japan's ancient Shinto religion. The fluffy crust is filled with milk custard and cream-infused bean paste. Interesting. I don't think we've had anything with a custard out of this box yet. So this is a first. Yeah, it just kind of looks, you know, like a little pastry. And it just smells sweet and a little biscuity. I definitely get the bean paste texture. It's got sweetness to it, but it's not a lot of sweetness. It almost comes off a little bit potato-y in flavor, too. I mean, there's like a slight vanilla flavor in there, but it mainly just tastes like red bean paste, in my opinion, with like that slight bit of vanilla to it. I don't really understand what the custard's doing. Well, I mean, I guess the custard's giving it that bit of vanilla, but that also could be coming from, like, the actual, um, you know, pastry on the outside. So, I don't know. But, it's not bad. Uh, once again, I think that's one that my wife's going to pass on. Because she's just like, meh. That one's all right. All right, next. Where are you going for? Okay, let's do this one. Which one is in better shape? Oh, that one. The second one's in better shape. So this one, oh, this this should be interesting. I when I saw this on the list, I was like, that could be real interesting. So this is coffee sable, butter cookies topped with crushed coffee beans 
which have been roasted in the Tatori sand dunes. Sand dunes. Okay. Yeah. There is a back to this one. There you go. And let's get in there and see what a coffee sable is all about. So I believe sable is just kind of like, kind of like tea cookies in a sense, like buttery tea cookies. Yeah, man. There's coffee on there. Look at those beans. It just smells like coffee. My gosh. And I love coffee. I'm a big coffee fan. Drink it every day. Ugh, black. I also do black coffee. Nothing in it because I really like to taste the coffee beans. Because uh, so, many, so many beans have such different character to them. Oh, God, it smells good. It just smells like, like coffee with a little bit of sweetness. So, even though I'm, like, eating coffee beans, the coffee beans taste less pronounced than I would assume eating straight-up coffee beans. Um, it tastes like really nice coffee, like a nice roast on there, like medium roast, not dark. So, it's got all those nice coffee flavors. And then there's just a nice, like, buttery sweetness that comes in. And um, it's pretty good. I dig it. You have to be good with, like, legitimately eating coffee beans. So, just a warning on that one for people who may not have interest in just, like, eating a coffee bean. Okay, so what do we got? Okay. All right. Next. This must be the Anaba White Rabbit. Show you that first, I guess. There. There is a back. Sorry. Like that. I don't know. It may have been upside down. Sorry. Anaba White Rabbit. A favorite snack of Tatori Prefecture. Mildly sweet white bean paste is enveloped in a delicate butter glazed manju crust. Shaped in the form of snow rabbits which roam the region. This snack has been a staple of the region for 50 years. That's a lot of time. Although we've had snacks that have been around like over 100 years. So... I guess it's not that much in comparison. That you know, thing's a little hard to get open. All right, there we go. Yeah, this looks like a little like oh, yep, little bunny. There you go. It smells sweet. It smells biscuity. Mhm. Mm so. Basically, it tastes the Dyson milk manju that we did. This tastes like that, minus that vanilla. And even more bean paste texture than the other one. Because the other one had the custard kind of like mellowing it out just a little bit. So it's basically like sweet red bean paste. You know. It's decent. Not, not a favorite, but it's decent. It's for when you don't want, like, crazy flavors or anything. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. This is the one I kind of set aside at first. So, this, this is going to be interesting. This is Chili Katsu. I'm sorry. Chili Katsu. <laughs> Lightly fried snacks topped with crispy seasoned breadcrumbs. So, I'm, I'm not great with heat. So, I'm hoping that it's not, like, crazy hot or anything. So, but we'll find out. That's kind of why I left it toward the end. Oh. Ooh, it smells fried. As soon as I open that up, I'm like, that's been fried. Ooh, it just, there's a sweetness, though. There's like a sugariness. It smells like sugar and salt. Fried sugar salt cracker is what it smells like. There is something else on there, which I assume is that chili, that actually smells a little bit barbecue. So check that out. These are really tiny. I'm interested to see what this is like. That's really good. Um, like you can definitely taste that it's fried, and it's got like that that fried portion on the outside. That's, you know, it's not like crispy, like freshly fried. It's been you know, in the package for a little bit, so it's kind of soft. Um, 
there's a really nice sweetness that comes in immediately. Like I was saying, I was smelling and then a really nice saltiness. And then that kind of like barbecue flavor I was talking about. And then it, it, it gets, gives you a little bit of a chili kick at the end, but it's not too much. It's just like a, like a warm feeling in my mouth. That tastes really good. This is a surprise. It kind of tastes like a fried barbecue something with a little bit of heat to it. That's tasty. I like that a lot. Interested for my wife to try that. She might like it. So I got two of those, unfortunately. I'd like more. As you saw, those things are small. That's really small. That's, I mean, the way I'm doing it, it's like two bites. But honestly, that to most people, that's one bite, basically. So, no biggie, though. Okay, and the last thing we have are Flowers Kiss Candy. Ever wonder what flowers taste like? This creamy apricot plum flavored candy is made with flower essence. So I got two different versions. So here you go. I don't know if they're different one. Yeah, they're different flowers, I guess. And I don't, like, I can't, <laughs> I can't tell what flowers what, unfortunately. So there's that flower. And there's that flower. I don't know. Sorry, my stomach was rumbling. I am hungry. Um, I'm going to do this flower. No, actually, I have I have more of these, so I'm going to do this flower. And then I'll figure out the other one later. Okay. Hard candy. Like I, I feel like they always put a hard candy item in these boxes, which is fine. Every now and then I like to have a hard candy. It smells fruity. Said apricot plum. It has a specific. It kind of smells like those those gummy peach rings, honestly. Not apricot plum. Or taste. It tastes good. So I wouldn't say that it tastes like flour in any respect. It's just fruity. Mm hmm. Okay, I see where I see the apricot and plum in this, but you could also argue that it smells and tastes like those gummy peach rings, kind of. But yeah, mm. yeah, that tastes good. I will finish that later because I don't want to keep having it in my mouth while I'm doing this. But um, that was actually the end. So just kind of a recap: what was I really into? Obviously, that's Tory sandwich. Holy crap, that's Tory Sandwich. This thing, oh my. This The salted caramel one with the cinnamon, that is amazing. Like I said, it's potentially the best thing that's ever been in these snacko boxes. That was crazy good. Uh, other than that, that chili katsu, man. I mean, I don't need to show you but we because we just did it, but the chili katsu. So those are my two favorite things. The Tatori Sandwich and the chili katsu. Awesome. Um, the other, uh, other runners up, I'd say, uh, the baked crab senbai was quite good. Very surprising. Very interesting. And the pear gaufret, which, you know, the pear gaufret and the baked crab senbai. Anyway. Okay. This, this video has gone for a while and, um, yeah, I'm going to shut it down, but it'll be interesting to see what we get for next month for April. I'm time warp. Sorry. It took me a little bit. But uh, thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Once again, please hit the subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell if you want to know every time I put up a video. Um, like I said, it takes you like a second. It can mean a lot for the channel. So I would really appreciate that. Thumbs up if you like. Comments down below. And we will get nerdy. We will talk about whatever you want, pretty much. But thank you. And until next time, keep it brutal.